Hi guys, it's Misty from The Book Rat, and it's time for my February Stack of Five. If you're unfamiliar with Stack of Five, basically I choose five books on a theme, and you guys vote for which one you want me to read and do a video review of. Now, this month's theme is fairy tale-ish. The reason being, Fairy Tale Fortnite is coming up at the end of April. It's probably a little early for me to start commandeering Stack of Five already, but since I'm in the planning stages, I'm in fairy tale mode, and I want to start digging into these books. So. I figured I would just embrace it. So the five books I'm going to show you are probably all going to be read, though I don't guarantee it, but you guys are going to decide which one will definitely be read and will definitely get a video review. To help you make your decision, I'm going to read a short excerpt of each book, but there are also links to all of the books below so you can find out what they're about and pick them up yourself if you want to. But here are the books, and I'm going to get right into it. First up is Beauty by Nancy Olin. This is a retelling of Snow White, and it takes place at like an academy, kind of boarding school feel, which I think sounds kind of interesting. Here is the beginning of Beauty. Queen Veda, the second monarch of the royal kingdom of Ran, stood inside her enormous wardrobe and surveyed the contents. Her dresses were organized by occasion. On the left were the ones for affairs of state, next to them evening clothes then day clothes, then hunting clothes, then clothes for brisk exercise. The dresses on the far right were for funerals and executions. She took one of them off its hanger and examined it. It was a long, wonderfully soft gown made out of black velvet. The color was pure fawn and the buttons, onyx, inlaid with rubies. The queen held the gown up to her body. The onyx was the color of her long, shiny black hair. The rubies were the color of her lips. She ran her fingers over the fawn collar. She turned to the beauty consultant who was sitting on his favorite stool. He was plucking apart a long-stemmed red rose. Well, she demanded. Next is The Brides of Roll Rock Island by Margot Lanigan, which is a sort of sulky, mermaidish tale. The old witch is there, said Radich, peering over the top to Six Mile Beach. Well settled with her knitting. It's all right, we're plenty, said Grinny. We're plenty and we have business, James said with some bluster. He was as scared of her as anyone. He shook his empty sack. We have been sent by our mams. We're to provide for our families. Yes, we've come all this way, said Oswald Caudron. We have. And down the cliff we went. It was a poisonous day. Every now and again the wind would take a rest from pressing us to the wall and try to pull us off it instead. We would grab together and sit then, making a bigger person's weight that it could not remove. The sea was gray with white dabs of temper all over it. The sky hung full of ragged strips of cloud. We spilled out onto the sand. Along we went in a bunch because of the witch. She sat some way along the distance we needed to go, and exactly halfway between tide line and water, as if she meant to catch the lot of us. Next up is Ophelia and the Marvelous Boy by Karen Foxley, which is a retelling of the Snow Queen. In the end, the Queen was nothing like she was in the stories the Marvelous Boy had been told, first as a child beside the hearth and later by the wizards. There were no claws, no sharp teeth. She was young. Her pale hair dripped over her shoulders. She opened her blue eyes and smiled sweetly at the king. I do not like him, my darling, she said, not once raising her voice. I do not like him one little bit. Now, these last two books I have already read partially, but kind of petered off on them. So if you guys vote for these, it will be for me to finish the book and finally review it. So those books are... The Girl Who Soared Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two by Catherine M. Valenti, which is the third book in the Fairyland series, so keep in mind if you vote for this one, there may be spoilers for books one and two. Once upon a time, a girl named September told a great number of lies. The trouble with lies is that they love company. Once you tell a single lie, that lie gets terribly excited and calls all its friends to visit. Soon you find yourself making room for them in every corner, turning down beds and lighting lamps to make them comfortable feeding them and tidying them and mending them when they start to wear thin. This is most especially true if you tell a very large lie, as September did. And the last book is Sorrow's Knot by Aaron Bow, which is not a direct fairy tale retelling, but has a very folkloric storytelling feel. The girl who remade the world was born in winter. It was the last day of the nameless moon and bitterly cold. For as long as she could, the girl's mother, whose name was Willow, walked round and round the outside of the midwife's lodge, leaning on the earthen walls when pains came fiercely. Willow's hair was full of sweat, and her body was steaming like a hot spring. She was trailed by a mist of ice that glittered in the bitter sunlight. She looked like a comet. She looked like what she was. 
a woman of power. All right, so those books again are Beauty by Nancy Olin, The Brides of Roll Rock Island by Margot Lanigan, Ophelia and the Marvelous Boy by Karen Foxley, The Girl Who Soared Over Fairyland and Cut the Moon in Two by Catherine M. Valenti, and Sorrow's Not by Erin Bow. Vote in the comments for which one you want me to read and do a video review of. Voting is open until the end of January, and the winner will be announced in my February TBR. And as always, if you want to do a stack of five to help you decide what you're going to read or to get yourself to do more video reviews, feel free. I always invite people to do them, and if you do, please leave me a link so I can come vote. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching, and happy reading!